Let me start by saying this. The Philippines is amazing. It's a tropical paradise, right? I mean, there's a reason I've been living here for over a year. And it's not just because the rent is cheap or the drinks are always cold. But listen, it's not all postcard perfect beaches and Instagram worthy sunsets. There are a few, let's call them quirks to this place. And because I'm a man of the people, it's my God given duty to share these no nonsense negatives. So you don't get blindsided by the not so charming side of paradise. I'm Brian, 43 years old, hailing from Portland, Oregon. And after dodging rain clouds for most of my life back in the Pacific Northwest, I figured a year and a half of sun and cheap rum and BGC Manila would be the antidote to all my first world problems. Well, it almost is. But let me break down the nine things that'll make you question your life choices when you move to the Philippines. Number nine, traffic congestion, where time goes to die. Ah, uh, Manila traffic. If you've never experienced it, let me paint a picture for you. Imagine if a parking lot and a street had a love child. It's where your day goes to disappear. You think you're just gonna pop out and grab a coffee? Ha, that's adorable. You'll spend more time sitting in a car than you will drinking your overpriced latte. The traffic here doesn't just slow down. It crawls like a drunk sloth on Ambien. Now this could be a real soul crusher, but here's the silver lining. You'll get very good at ride sharing apps. Grab the local Uber equivalent will become your new best friend because driving yourself, that's for masochists. And hey, while you're stuck in bumper to bumper chaos, you can gaze out the window and soak in the vibrant street life. Or you know, contemplate every life choice that led you to this point. Number eight, tropical heat, where deodorant goes to die. Yeah, it's hot, like really hot. Not just, oh, it's a warm day hot. I'm talking sweat through your shirt just by blinking hot. You'll wake up at 8 a.m. and already feel like you're living in Satan's armpit. The kind of heat that makes you question whether you've pissed off some ancient weather god. But here's the thing about this tropical inferno. It forces you to live the island life, whether you want to or not. It's too hot to stress out, too hot to move quickly, too hot to wear pants, so why fight it? Instead of complaining, like I do every single day, just embrace the beach bum mentality. It's all about sun, sand, and sweating out the toxins. If nothing else, it'll keep you fit. Want to shed a few pounds? Live in the Philippines for a few months and let the humidity be your personal sauna. Number seven, power outages where electricity goes to take a nap. Ah yes, the infamous brownouts. Just when you're getting into a movie or writing that brilliant text, bam, no power. Now I don't know if it's a tradition, some cosmic joke, or just part of the experience, but brownouts are a thing here. And no, it's not a once in a blue moon type deal. The power might flicker like a cheap nightclub strobe light at least a few times a month, especially if you're out in the provinces. But hey, it's not all bad. It gives you a chance to unplug. Yeah, it's the universe telling you to chill out for once. Go outside, read a book, remember those, or actually talk to someone without staring at a screen like a zombie. Or, you know, sweat your way through another humid evening without air conditioning. Either way, it's character building, right? Number six, unpredictable weather, where the forecast goes to lie. If you think the weather back home is unpredictable, then welcome to the Philippines, where mother nature has mood swings more unpredictable than a soap opera plot twist. It's sunny one minute, and the next you're caught in a typhoon level downpour. Not a cute drizzle, mind you, a full-on someone angrily dumped a bucket on your head situation. Oh, and did I mention the floods? Don't worry, you'll get used to wading through puddles the size of small ponds. The key here is to always, and I mean always, have an umbrella on hand. You'll also learn to roll with the punches. Think of it as an adventure, because what's life without a little unpredictability? Besides, those cozy rainy days are the perfect excuse to hole up in a cafe or or your apartment with a cold beer and a good book. Or Netflix, let's be real. Number five, laid back work culture, where time management goes to retire. If you're the type of person who likes things to happen on time, then my friend, you're in for a rude awakening. Filipino time is not just a saying, it's a way of life. Things will happen, but not when you think they should, and certainly not in a rush. Meetings start whenever, deadlines are more like vague suggestions, and everyone's just a little too chill about it. But hey, if you can't beat them, join them. The laid back attitude might drive you nuts at first, but eventually it'll start to grow on you. You'll learn to go with the flow and who knows, maybe you'll even enjoy the slower pace. It's not laziness, it's zen. You might end up with a better work-life balance and a lot less stress, or you'll end up yelling into a pillow. Either way, welcome to the Philippines. Number four, limited high-end shopping options, where your credit card goes to die of boredom. Now, if you're the type who enjoys strolling through high-end stores and dropping cash on designer goods, you might be in for a rude awakening. The luxury shopping scene here is, let's say, limited. Sure, you've got a few fancy malls like Greenbelt or Rockwell, where you can drop an obscene amount of pesos on something shiny. But if you're looking for the variety you'd get in New York, Paris, or even your local outlet mall, well, 
Tough luck, buddy. But here's the thing, the lack of luxury shopping options might just be a blessing in disguise. It forces you to rethink your priorities. Suddenly, you're not obsessing over the latest Gucci bag or whatever overpriced status symbol people are into these days. Instead, you start living a more minimalist life, focusing on what really matters, like experiences or, you know, cold beers by the beach. Plus, the local markets are packed with unique finds. Sure, you might not get a Louis Vuitton bag, but how about a handcrafted rattan basket? It's rustic, it's local, and it probably won't set you back three months rent. Number three, noise pollution, where your eardrums go to die. Now let's talk about noise. If you're coming to the Philippines expecting peaceful, quiet mornings, sipping coffee while birds chirp in the background, think again. The streets here are alive, sometimes a little too alive. Honking horns, barking dogs, and let's not forget karaoke at 3 a.m. because who doesn't want to hear someone belt out my way at the top of their lungs on a Tuesday night? But here's the silver lining, that constant hum of life, it's part of the vibrant, chaotic charm of the Philippines. It's not just noise, it's energy, it's community. It's the sound of people living, laughing, and probably drinking too much Red Horse. And yeah, it might drive you up the wall some nights, but you learn to live with it. Heck, you might even start joining in the madness. Or at the very least, invest in a good pair of noise-canceling headphones. Number two, bureaucratic red tape, where your patience goes to die. Ah, bureaucracy. If you've ever thought the DMV back home was slow, just wait until you try to get anything done in the Philippines. Whether it's renewing a visa, getting a driver's license, or basically interacting with any form of government, prepare yourself for an Olympic level test of patience. Forms, check. Waiting in line for hours, double check. That feeling of losing the will to live, triple check. But here's the thing, you learn to adapt. The endless paperwork and red tape teach you patience, sure, but it also forces you to get creative. You'll start finding loopholes, shortcuts, and if you're lucky, ways to make the whole process slightly less soul crushing. Plus, when something does go smoothly, and trust me, it's rare, you'll feel like you've just conquered Everest. It's all about managing expectations and celebrating the small victories, like finally getting your electricity reconnected after a three-day brownout. Party time. Number one, limited infrastructure, where modern convenience goes to die. And finally, let's talk infrastructure. Now I'm spoiled. I've lived in places with lightning fast internet, reliable public transport, and roads that don't double as obstacle courses. So when I first arrived here, the patchy internet and unpredictable public services took some getting used to. You'll quickly realize that not everywhere in the Philippines is as developed as BGC or Makati. The further out you go, the more you feel like you're stepping back in time. No, not in a charming, nostalgic way, but more in a why is there no running water here way. But if you can get past the lack of first world conveniences, you'll discover something beautiful. Those areas with limited infrastructure, they're often the least touched by commercialism, the most connected to nature. You'll find hidden beaches, waterfalls, and rural villages that feel like they've been plucked straight out of a travel magazine, before the influencers got to them, that is. It's a simpler life, but one that makes you appreciate the little things like fresh air, quiet mornings, and the fact that your phone hasn't buzzed in hours because, well, there's no signal. And honestly, once you stop expecting things to work the way they do back home, you start to appreciate the chaos. It's all part of the adventure. You'll learn to embrace the unpredictability. Because what's the alternative? Stressing out about things you can't change? Nah, you're in the Philippines now. Grab a cold beer, kick back, and go with the flow. Or, you know, at least try to. So there you have it. Nine no-nonsense negatives about life in the Philippines. But let's be real. These aren't deal breakers. If anything, they're part of the charm because at the end of the day, you'll still be living in a tropical paradise surrounded by incredible people and endless adventure. Sure, it's a little rough around the edges, but so am I. And look how great I turned out. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, smash the like button, subscribe, and send this to that friend who's thinking about moving to the Philippines. Trust me, they'll need the heads up. God bless folks, stay cool.